Hello, I'm Rudy Kistler, and this is one approach to painting. Today I'm going to be using a monochromatic palette to paint this T-bone steak. Let's get started. I'm going to start by priming my board. And on the tonal palette, um, tones one, two, three, and four, I'm just going to use tone three, so it's not the darkest and it's not the lightest, and this will just be a nice dark tone to work off of. It also has the added benefit of sealing the board so it's waterproof. So I'm going to begin by painting in the background, which is always the largest area. And behind the plate, it seems to be quite a dark tone. So I'll just grab into my darkest neutral tone here. And just find the back edge of the plate. Now, the tablecloth is probably the next largest area, and it's a slightly darker shade than the plate. The plate is the, the lightest tint, and so I might just grab tint two and do the tablecloth. And now, it might be nice to block in the steak, which is going to help me place it on the plate, and then I can put the plate around it, but the steak's more important than the plate. So it's basically based on the dark tone, and I might use a less saturated one. That way it'll sit nicely, and we can build up from it. So the steak starts back in this corner. Comes forward and over to about here at the top. Angles like that up to about here. So this is just the basic rough shape. And the plate is the lightest tone in the entire picture, except for some of the highlights on the fat. Um, so I'll just go ahead and reach into my lightest tonal tint and put in the plate.
So these are the basic tonal areas. And I've covered the entire canvas with, or the entire, I've covered the entire panel with the tones so that now I can start to build on them. Basic drawing seems right. The only thing that I'm noticing that I don't have in is the edge of the, the table here, and I really like that angle. I think it might add something to it. So knowing that this is tone two, I might just add tone three and add the shadow on the side. And the same tone is found underneath the plate from the shadow being cast by our light source. So I might just try to put that in. Also, a shadow in the plate, um, and so I might use this same tone just to link them all up. And now we should address some of the light and shadow on the stake itself. So I might start, this ended up being a nice mid-tone. I thought it was going to be a bit darker. So I might go ahead and reach into a bit of a darker one. And um, that's going to have to go with, on the shades. So I'll, I'll take this tone four on the shade side and just put in some of the darker parts of the stake. And the fat that's on the side there is obviously a lighter tone. So I'll just grab a desaturated version of maybe the um, maybe these tones here. Now that's the same tone if not lighter so I'll actually use some lighter tones on top to bring up the stake. reach into t tone four of the tints. And this is fully saturated, so it's really gonna look like the light's hitting it. And this will just show us where the top of the stake is. Now it looks like the light's hitting it. It looks a bit more like a ham steak, that pink color. So I might have to go in with some darker reds. But for now, let's go back into the background. So now I'm going to put in some of my dark darks because everything's still kind of in the mid-tonal range. And so this is my darkest shade. And I might just put a little shadow underneath the steak itself. It gets it to sit a little bit better. And I might use the same brown underneath the plate where the darkest shadow is. Now there's also some other shadows happening inside the, the shadow under the plate. And I might just take my darkest neutral tone and place that here to help blending between the dark brown and the mid-tone gray. Seems a bit more natural. Might also put some of this on the side of the table. We've got the light edge of the table there too. I might try to put that in, it's, it's kind of interesting. So I'll just take my 
lightest tone and show where that is. And just use a bit of dry brushing to rub it out. That's better. Now the background is looking really dark. And I know that it's the darkest tone, so I might take the next darkest tone and just work down. So this is reducing the contrast, which is the opposite of what I'm trying to do on the stake by increasing the contrast. The reduction in contrast will create a sense of atmospheric perspective, like the space goes back a bit further. And it also just tends to draw our attention to the things of greater contrast, which is the stake, which is the actual subject matter itself. So you can see that just knocks that back a little bit. Now I'm going to go in and put some really fully saturated darks on the top of the stake because I realize I've got it a bit too light. This one's nice and dark, but it's really red still. And I'll just put this in the pools where I see dark bits of meat. And now perhaps a less saturated dark tone where the bone is coming through on the left side. Now let's just bring it right up by putting in some of these lightest tones, fully saturated tints, um, to show where the light's hitting the fat that's on top of the steak really bring it up. It's good to work wet into wet for this part too because it really gives the appearance of fat. Now this same fat that we did in this tint is just going to be two tones darker on the side of the stake where it's not receiving light. So I might just use this really gray one. Just like we have the fully saturated tints on the fat part, I might want to put some highlights on the bone, but it's obviously not going to be as saturated. So I'll just mix a bit of this lightest tint in with a bit of my lightest gray. Now we need to bring up the plate a little bit. So I'm going to dip back into this lightest saturated tint and into my lightest gray. 
and continue using this because it's a nice bright color, but it's not too saturated, so it doesn't look like it's got a local color, which I can use for the white of the plate. There's just a little sliver of light on the front of the plate, and rather than using my light to do that, I might just grab a dark, or rather between my second and third tone of my neutral, and then just leave a sliver of light. And now there's a little ridge on the inside of the plate. I might try to get that with the darkest tone. Now all of this is looking pretty good, but I might want to bring up a bit more light into the front of the picture. So I'll use my second tint of the fully saturated vermilion with a little bit of a neutral because I don't want it to stand out as much as the steak. Clean my brush, and I'll dry brush this out. Now I'd like to put some secondary lights into the shadow in the front of the plate. So I know that that was tone three, so I'll just take tone two. It'll just be a little bit lighter. And again, there's a secondary light just in there, so I'll hit that with number two as well. Now I'm also going to just redraw around the stake to give it a bit more of a dynamic form. So I'm just going into that white that I used for the plate, the lightest tone. I'll just adjust this angle. And this one. If 
you find that your paint is blending in and starting to smear around, just you can let it dry or you can just use more paint and lay it a little bit more gingerly on top. I'll just take that brightest tint and put that highlight on the front of the plate now. Now I want to bring up a bit more color on the steak, so I'm going to reach into my fourth tint, which is just off of vermilion, has the most amount of saturation, just on this side of the steak where it's really catching the light. I might move to the side of the stake and try to put a little bit of a lighter bit at the top where it seems like the light will be catching that fat, but it's not that saturated, just tonally a bit lighter. Might just adjust the back of the steak again with this darker, darkest tone. It seems to come in there, the base of the T. Yeah. I'll just put a light tone in front of that. To put in a little bit of color on the side of that steak, I might take my first tint of desaturated vermilion and just see if I can put that in on the side. That's better. Now the shadows on the plate are still looking pretty heavy. So I might try to lighten those up a little bit just by working in slightly lighter neutral tones. So anywhere that I've got tone three, I'm going to mix in tone two. A little bit lighter than that.
when white objects get too dark, they tend to seem a bit heavy. And I think that just by lightening those tones up, it makes the plate look a little bit lighter, which is nice. I might do the same just underneath and correct that shadow. Right side as well. Might mix into an even lighter tone over there. And I might put a couple of darker strokes down in there just to mix that up a bit. It's a rather large area. Perhaps a slightly darker tone there. Now back to the top of the stake, I might mix in the closest that I could get to Vermilion just to give it a bit more color on top. Color really emphasizes that the, the light is hitting it, and that's what I need to show on the top of the stake. And all of these extra colors and tones up here will help to enrich the palette. You can see that it's just making it more red, which is good. There's a bit of a darker kind of shadow inside of the bone there. And so I might try mixing a desaturated vermilion into my darkest shade. And see if I can put that in. And then I'll just dry brush that out. Just so we get a bit of a blend. That's a bit better. And I'll do the same thing on the bottom part with the same exact tone. just helps to create a little bit of contrast there. We also need a hard line somewhere in there. All of those tones are very similar. So I might do the same thing with this dark brown. just gives us something solid to hang on to on the front of it. Now we might just put a bit of the reflection of the light um, as it glares on the stake and on the plate. We've mostly just stuck to localized highlights, but now it's kind of an overall sense of the light going over the composition. So I'll just take a fully saturated one tint off of the lightest tint, so it's got lots of color in it. 
and just put this in a few select places. It's nice to use the back of the brush to get a bit of a contrast going so it's not just a brush stroke, but it's, it seems more like light. It's more of an organic mark. You can get carried away with it, but it's nice here and there. These wet into wet effects are really marvelous for doing things like this steak. Looks a bit better. Now I just need to bring this up in tone just a little bit with a desaturated light pink. There's a little bit down there that I might just try to get in with one of these dark browns. And now at the very end, if you want to come in with a little bit of white, it can really help in certain places on the plate. So I'll just add a little bit. a slightly smaller brush and at first it's good to just feather it in and then do stronger highlights if you think you need it. And then maybe just a bit on the steak.
Now I think to finish it off, I just need to give a bit of variation in these areas and also to shorten these strokes. The long strokes tend to make it look very small, but if I break up those strokes, it'll look like a much larger surface. So I'll start with that. It's desaturated red. Makes the surface area look a bit larger there. Now I use this third tint off the vermilion, which we haven't used yet. Hopefully that'll bring it up. Good, good. Now all of this rich color is really making that look dead. So before I stop, I might just put a little bit of red into that. And I think what I'll do is just put it on the edge. It'll emphasize the shape of the T-bone as well. Now I might substitute in some dark reds for some of these dark browns just to bring a bit more color in.
just lighten up the background a bit more. It's getting a bit heavy. Just give a bit of variation with some dry brushing. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.